Okay, thanks for your, uh, helping right. relocate the, the studio. We got caught up that in a, a rare desert storm up here at Altitude in Reno. And so uh, we rebuilt the studio lights. And once again, I'm here with Dr. Nathan Townsend of the Doha, what's the institute called? Well, uh, it's Aspatar. Aspatar. Yeah. Uh, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Hospital. Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Hospital. Great. Um, we were talking about the uh, dynamics of this product called W Prime mm -hmm. and threshold versus VO2. Yes. So could you just go back over that real quickly again? So let's go back to yeah. so what we were talking about. We were talking about this this idea that like so that as the threshold is a VO2. So always think of threshold. Uh, not as a power output. Okay. That's a bad thing to do. Okay. 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 Like, Good enough. It's not act. Well, when I say bad, I mean not. It's not really accurate. Okay. Okay. A better way to think of threshold is that threshold is a, is a an oxygen consumption level. Okay. Okay. And it's the highest oxygen consumption that I can sustain the oxygen consumption, which means that if the oxygen consumption is level, yes. what it means is that the amount of energy being provided by the aerobic energy system meets the energy demand. Got it. Okay? Got it. If the aerobic energy system is increasing, then the energy demand is higher than what the current aerobic energy supply is. And that shortfall is being made up by the anaerobic energy system. Okay, but when we go above, the level where where we can meet the demand, okay, so this is threshold. So now we're in a situation where the, the VO2 is always increasing, mm -hmm. okay, which means it's always, if the VO2 is increasing, there is less aerobic energy supply right. than the exercise energy demand. That means the anaerobic energy system is making up the shortfall, okay. And it's borrowed time. And it's borrowed time. So the anaerobic energy system is fatiguing at the level of the muscle. Gotcha. And that'll eventually cause you to stop exercise. And let's just say that we are, um, and here's another, like this is the, the relationship between the power profile curve, which we talked about earlier, yes. and the anaerobic energy system creating this, creating fatigue. It's sort of obvious in a way. It's like, well, if we have threshold here, okay, mm -hmm. and let's say this is 300 watts. Yes. If my power is just a little bit above threshold, yep. what that means is I only need a little bit of extra anaerobic energy than the level that the aerobic energy system is going to get up to. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So I'm going to fatigue slowly. Yes. All right. But if I increase the power way above my threshold, okay, and this is what's really interesting in, in most human beings, in most trained cyclists, the peak power output that we can hit, yes. okay, might be four times higher than our threshold. Yes. That's probably about average. Yes. You know, four times higher. We can do 400% of our threshold that's at right. some point for some short for, period. For a couple of seconds. Yes. Okay, that's peak power output, you right. know, and it might be five or six times if you're like an elite sprint cyclist or sure. something like that. Sure. But it might only be two or three times higher if you are like, if you've got no sprint power whatsoever, but you have a very high threshold yes. because you're very aerobically well-trained and you have the aerobic genetics of lots of fast twitch fibers, then maybe maybe you don't have such a, a, a big increase. But as you increase that power, let's just say that you go, you have a threshold of 300 watts. If you exercise at 320, well, you're gonna, it's going to take you quite a long time mm -hmm. for the VO2 to keep going up and up and up to reach mm -hmm. VO2 max right. because, you know, you're not far above. So you're just, you're fatiguing slowly. But if you go to 800 watts, well, the, the shortfall, you're so much higher than, than your threshold power. The shortfall is, is very large, yes. which means you need to use a lot of extra anaerobic energy which means you're going to fatigue a lot faster yes yes okay yes. so mm -hmm. that and that relationship creates this curvilinear profile Got of the um the power profile curve so we we talked about you know so when you go above you use anaerobic energy and 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 um, we mentioned before that we can't really we cannot equate w prime to anaerobic work capacity right because when we go okay. above threshold still the vo2 is increasing a little bit right so there's some aerobic energy so it's a bit of a misnomer that's right it's not a hundred percent anaerobic work okay. capacity okay. so w prime it was not, a term of convenience 10 years ago that's right when you guys yeah, were exactly on. so or 30 20 30 20 30 years ago. Years ago. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. 
So, so really, so W prime is, it contains both anaerobic energy and aerobic energy. Okay. And this, in my opinion, this is actually, this is one of the, uh, shall we say limitations this is the model is quite basic it's a very very basic mathematical model it's only has two parameters it's a hyperbola it's very very simple you yes. know so it doesn't accurately describe what is actually happening physiologically okay because what we're doing in w prime is we're kind of mishmashing aerobic and an aerobic and anaerobic energy together right definitely dominated by anaerobic energy supply sure but there is some there's always aerobic. going to be some error. That's right. right. And then, and the amount of aerobic energy that is supplied in different individuals mm -hmm. with the same W prime can then, if you if, if you equate anaerobic en uh, work capacity with W prime, you'll make a mistake. If you, we compare you and I, right? Maybe you have you a, have a twenty five kilojoule or AWC. That's right. It does maybe mean... maybe your anaerobic work capacity mm -hmm. is actually much higher than mine. Okay, yeah. because you're. You know, your, your VO2 kinetics are slower, they're going, you have a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or something like it's that. Not, you know? It's not a common shoebox. You've got That's a, right. it, it, We have yeah. too much unique individualization. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, but anyway, we can still, using that relationship of, of W prime, like if you, if there's a certain amount of W prime, and the way that I prefer to conceptualize it, and at the last conference this year in, um, the European Congress of Sports Science in and Dr. In, Chung was there. That's right in Prague a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, I met. I, I said hello to him cool. briefly. Nice. Um, and um, he was recovering from foot surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and a few more people were talking about when we were talking about W prime. Right. I was saying, look, I don't conceptualize W prime as a battery, as an energy store that depletes. Okay. Okay. All what right. I do. Okay. Uh, which is conceptually the I have in the past. We have, yeah, so, we have this anaerobic right. energy supply. And I call it a bank account. You're borrowing from the bank and you're putting yeah, money yeah. back in. With no, no, no. A better way, a better please, way, please. A, I think a much better way to conceptualize W prime is the opposite. It's an empty bucket okay. which you fill up with fatigue. Okay. You fill it up with mechanisms of fatigue. All right. And then you process the fatigue. Well, you, 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 when, when the bucket, imagine this is my bucket. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So here I have my anaerobic energy. I'm, I'm, I'm expending my anaerobic energy. Yes. And it's pouring You're fatigue. You're pouring beer into the bucket. I'm pouring beer or, or I'm pouring inorganic phosphate. Sure. And, you know, lactic and hydrogen ions and, you know. Waste. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm decreasing my phosphocreatine level. That that actually yeah. there is a bit of an energy store. But okay, a, like really a better way to go is to conceptualize it as a. This is at the top is my W prime, and I'm filling up. And when the bucket gets to the top, right, it it, it, it can't overflow. You're out of you're out of you're out of options. Your that's when it reaches the top. That's going to be the perception when you're at the point when you're exercising, and you're like. I'm, I, I can't go anymore. Or, this and no further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and there's two with fatigue. I, I really think that there are there are two um, shall we say categories, two key categories of, of fatigue in this zone. Like so, when we're filling sure. up and we've got this, acute W prime. So this type of fatigue, remember, it's always above. It's always above threshold. Yes, and above critical power. That's right. And mm -hmm. what we talked about uh, before, it's always driven by mechanisms. It's driven by the anaerobic energy system, which is causing fatigue in the muscle. Some of those same mechanisms are, they are stimulating nerves, which are sending information to the brain, which is uh, inhibiting our ability to turn the muscle on. Gotcha. And we are perceiving that as perception of effort. Okay, so imagine I'm trying to hold a certain power output, but as I'm getting more and more and more fatigued, and I have more signals blocking, so blocking the 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 signals from the brain going down to the yep. muscle. Yep. Yep. It's like, well, I have to I have to exert more. I have to use more conscious mental energy right. to turn the muscle on. I have to take turn on harder muscle. You know, like. Which we, we do you, naturally. It's willpower. We, we do willpower. it. We do it every day, like naturally, like uh, almost unconsciously. If I pick this up, right. okay, versus this, I can feel the difference in the weight. Yes. So the the level of effort to pick that up 
is slightly higher than the level of effort to pick that up. Yes. Okay. Um, but if I become fatigued, okay, if I fatigue, if I do, and I fatigue the muscle, what will happen is the level of effort in a fatigued muscle to pick this up can now become the same as the level of effort to pick that up when I'm fresh. Okay, so you've shifted the entire. Time. So as you become fatigued, you, it, there's it's more of an effort to do the same power output. Okay, and I what I suspect and what I think is that's because of the inhibition of the drive, the the descending signals from the brain. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay, and your brain you're able to detect that through these complex central nervous system mechanisms we call. There's this thing called an efference copy, which. You know, we believe there's these two copies of the, the signal and then the information from one mismatches the other and then it, oh, wow. the brain so compares you guys are it. deep. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. some, some psych, psych, yeah. You know, psychobiological professors. Oh, my gosh. Psychobiological. Look, yeah, that look into this area. But, but more or less, what, what I really feel is that the, the mismatch is because you have this inhibition. So normally when you're fresh, all of the information gets to the muscle. Mm-hmm. When you're fatigued, there's a huge amount of... Uh, fatigue uh, blocking so you have to exert greater conscious mental energy some people the exertion that level Mm -hmm. of exertion required is beyond what they 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 don't have they can't do it they can't sustain it also which I, I conceptualize this as slightly different so I think that the physical discomfort the pain that you feel in the muscle is a distinct, uh, shall we say, like a mental, it's, it's a distinct mental state or it's a different emotion. Okay? Right. So the feeling of exerting mental energy to maintain a particular task is, to me, is distinct from the discomfort of doing the task itself. Yes, exactly. Does that discomfort make versus pain. That's there's right. A, there is a difference. Yeah. Yes. Or, or what I would call the discomfort and the pain, I would kind of call them, they're sort of the same thing. Okay. The pain, All right. the pain of the exercise okay. is discomforting. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And some people, sense. some people, they stop because they don't like that right. sensation. They just can't handle it. They can't handle it. Yeah. It, it feels uncomfortable. They can't embrace that. That's right. It mm-hmm. feels uncomfortable. They're like, fuck this, I want to stop. You know, right, like, right, right. I, this is too much. This, this hurts too much. So this is what we would call, this is a conscious decision to, de- to decrease the power output, okay? Which buys you more, which brings you to... No, 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 so imagine, no, no, okay. so what okay. you're doing is you're fatiguing, you're saying, I can't go anymore. Okay. You, you consciously, let's just say you're at 400 watts. Okay. Your critical power is 300, which means that you've been, every single second, you've been expending 100 joules per second above critical prime. So you're expending 100 joules of your... W prime, or you're filling up yes, your okay, tank okay, okay. by 100 joules per second Got of it. of kind of yeah. of fatigue yeah, mechanisms, yeah, yeah. and then you get to the point. And some when 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 the tank is full of fatigue, so some people that fatigue there's is, some psychobiological. Limit. That's right. So in some people that fatigue when they reach that point, they make a conscious decision to decrease the power. Okay, they okay. consciously decide. I'm going to decrease the power from 400 to below, back down to 100 watts or something sure. where it's like, sure, I can recover. Yes. And then you get this fear, you get this sensation of recovering and you feel more comfortable. You go, exactly. you go back okay. from, you return from hypoxia. That's right. Yeah. And what we, what we definitely find is that in different studies, there seems to be, uh, and it's tricky the way that you measure this, but the way... Uh, what we think is that people who are less well trained, mm-hmm. okay, so people that are not accustomed to high intensity exercise, they tend to make a conscious decision to stop exercising. Right. Okay. So they're not accustomed, so they consciously decrease the power. They haven't reached their true maximum. Right. 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 Um, so maybe what that. So for example, what that means is there are four hundred watts. It, and hell, if someone's at 400 watts and they have a threshold of 300 and they're not very accustomed to high intensity exercise, they're probably born a world champion. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Super yeah. genetics. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You know, so maybe we're talking people like with a threshold of 200 or 150 or something like that. that. Right, right, right. People anyway, have been chronic athletes. These people, they tend to, they stop with a conscious decision. When you come to someone who's a really 
high level athlete though, they, they're accustomed to the, the physical discomfort, okay, of, and also the two things, they're accustomed to the physical discomfort and they're accustomed to exerting this maximum level of conscious mental energy. And some people, for example, uh, some people, they're not good at the second one, you know, like they're not good at exerting this high level of effort. Sure. You know, like they have other specialties. Uh, maybe, maybe they can handle the pain or, or the discomfort, but they don't like exerting that level of mental energy. But most really good, highly motivated athletes, they've got both. They can exert the mental energy mm-hmm. to, to keep driving at, at a maximum level. Yep which is actually kind of mentally stressful. It's quite hard. It's like, uh, yeah. you know, it, it can mentally stress you. Sure, you know? sure. Um, and they can also handle the physical discomfort. So what happens with these people is when they when the, 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 they reach the top, right. they don't consciously bring the power down. They just keep giving a maximum effort. And despite giving a maximum effort, the power doesn't stay at 400 watts anymore. No, it'll gently power down. The power starts coming down. But instead of dropping like a cliff, it'll act like a cliff. Exactly, that's right. So so when the power drops like a cliff is usually a sign where they consciously made a decision to stop exercising and then it just goes boom. Whereas somebody who keeps giving a maximum effort for as long as they possibly can, the power will decline because Again, it's because of fatigue mechanism. Sure. It's because of this idea. Friction is winning. It's because of the fatigue that's occurring in the muscle and the signals that the muscle are telling the brain. This reminds okay. me of Wingate. The Wingate test. The 30 that's seconds right. where they exactly. dump everything onto you and you've got to keep going. And inevitably, that's right. your it parabola, is, is. you go high watts and then it starts to, it starts to, to trickle down. Like that's that. right. And the rate of decline yes. is frequently what yeah. determines whether you're one type of athlete or, or not. Or yeah. type of athlete. That's right. Yeah. Or, or even when you extend that out to the three minute all out test. Okay? Which is so, one of your favorites. So the three minute all out test is conceptually, it's supposed to it's be... It's an con- eternity. Well, it's actually supposed to be conceptually similar to the, the wind gate, except okay. it lasts for three minutes. But we know from studies on pacing yes. that it's very 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 rare for people to hit peak power in a three minute even in a wingate test which lasts 30 seconds yes it's very rare for somebody to hit the peak power at the start of a wingate test that they will hit if you just ask them to do a five or a six second peak power effort that's great that's okay so, great. so if you just get someone I've to got do 30 wingate tests with dot matrix printer yeah. in, the, in my garage you, yeah, so, so, so on on average if you get people to do a like a five or a six second peak power test sure. and then and then maybe half an hour later you get them to do a wingate test they're not going to get the same power they're, not going to be within 300 watts. they're capable they sure. can they, they can. could okay. they could but they somehow subconsciously pace they don't want to go out too hard because they know they've got 30 seconds. Gosh, that's great. And maybe great. they've done it before uh-huh, or, or uh-huh, whatever. Uh-huh. Very cool. Um, very but very realistic, cool. But, but this is conceptually showing you what will happen when W when you reach the maximum W prime that uh-huh. you can get to and yeah. you just keep going. Okay? So in these athletes, what's happening is is they keep accruing W prime, but as they're getting closer to their threshold, they're reaching the Rubicon. They get they get back to de- they get back to threshold, not through consciously no. stopping the exercise, right, right, just right. because they're still, their power just diminishes. That's right, yes. and that's a physiological thing. The body is saying no more. You can't uh-huh. keep exercising uh-huh. at this high intensity. Um, is that what you see in some of these uh, sprint finishes? When you see the, the like the first guy to jump is not always the first guy to, to the finish. Exactly, I think that's what happens. So, so when you when you see a sprint finish, uh-huh. or for example, a better way to describe it might be when you see someone make a breakaway with like. So it's not the sprint, right? It's a breakaway with two kilometers to go. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, two thousand five or six, when Spartacus took off with eight hundred meters. He won by a nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah, kind of yeah. thing, you know, because so everybody else was reeling him in. Yeah, yeah. And so he just so, happened to so time it right. So they, so they have, they're doing a longer sustained effort, which might be two or three minutes to get to the finish, and then maybe, and then they're just giving it. And of course, they're so motivated. They're getting, they're trying to win the race. Yes, you know? like, yes, yes. They are highly motivated, but they're slowing down. Uh huh. They're not slowing down because of a conscious decision. No. They are still giving it everything that they've got. They are hurting themselves. The friction is just yeah. winning. Their metabolism and is I, catching up to I, them. I feel as though the pain barrier, when you are well trained, this is from personal experience, I feel as though the pain barrier is not limiting. 
Okay, so for me personally, when I'm not very well trained and I haven't done a lot of high intensity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is. It's like, oh, I'm going to stop, you know? I yes. make a conscious decision to decrease the power. But when I'm in really good shape and I've been doing lots of high intensity exercise and, and enough of these all out type of tasks yes. where you push yourself to your absolute limit, then you get this thing It's like, it's actually not that uncomfortable. Sure. I can keep going. Mm -hmm. I don't have to stop. I'm just going to give it everything I've got. I'm going to give it a max effort. And you do, and then you just keep going, and then you just can't hold the power, no matter how hard you try. Which is the concept behind... You can't behind, save the power. Sure. It's the concept behind Tabata. So, the well, Tabata intervals, or, or eight intervals, and you do every single one of them as hard as you can, knowing that you're not going to reach the same number every single time. Yeah. It's going to be that asymp that 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 That's uh, right. that parabola. Like repeated repeat it, sprints, Exactly. Yeah. And you're just you're just going to get less and less and less, but your metabolism is going to go through the roof. Yes. And your ability to tolerate the lactic acid and process it with interleukins yeah. is where your gains will come from. Yeah. And that's, you know, everyone misunderstood the entire process, but Tabata basically did it because it's a long track skating rink. Yeah. It takes about 20 seconds on the straights and about 10 seconds on yeah. the turns. And this last Olympics, uh -huh. the Japanese had a great year. Right. They, okay. they, did, they were one yeah, of the top, yeah. they, them and the Dutch were some of the strongest yeah, uh, in the, skaters in the winter skating. games. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so, so then, you know, you have this with the, like, so there, I think these are the two kind of broad mechanisms, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. in either case, what will happen is eventually the power will come back below gotcha. the threshold gotcha. and then your accumulation of W prime finishes. And How do you scientists handle the concept behind negative W prime? Because we know there's about a 90 second, uh, Dr. Uh -huh. Skiba, when he developed it, it was about a 90 second window and he was working with triathletes and yeah. endurance runners. But when we're looking at cycling, it has so many different stochastic anaerobic bouts yeah. and moments that I find that it's almost too easy to get into negative W yeah. prime, which which sort of blows the AWC model. In my, in How my, do we handle well, it? Does, it it's, that's right, it blows the model. So yeah. that's what it is. So what I, um, I know I've had discussions about this with other, yes. you know, Again, people like one Phil, of the top guys. people like Phil and another guy called Dave Clark, we, we talked about this and, um, and, and Phil and I were sort of on the same page here. What we feel and what I feel is that simply negative W prime, okay, which means you expending, so you do it. It's, it's like it's like fuzz you overflowing. It, you do it well foam over foam or negative beer. W balance. Yeah, so negative W balance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So right. what you do is you do your critical power um, test, you model the critical power, you you get your value of W prime, then you do some exercise above so the work balance model what that is is when you go above and below so again we go above critical power yeah we fill up the tank yeah with, with waste meters. in the tank mm -hmm. right we go below critical power and we deplete we the start tank. To, we start to process that that's step. right yep. we recover Metabolize it. we recover so what that allows us to do in the future after we've recovered more we can then do another effort mm -hmm. above critical we can power. set floors and see yeah, exactly that was what we did right so we're decreasing the tank which gives us more room to fill it up again later on. Right. Okay, so that process, the kinetics of the filling and the decreasing of the W balance model. So if you get to a point, if you ever get to a point when you are absolutely on the absolute limit, on the road, you give it everything that you got, um, and then at the moment of fatigue, your W prime, your W balance is very far negative, which means what that means is that you've expended more. Um, you've expended more energy above critical power than what we predict you should be able to. Right. The okay. prediction we blew. So the prediction's not correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So basically, the model's not correct. Okay. That's what I think it means. It's sure. just simply that the model is not sophisticated enough. Well, it means to model human physiology. Okay. What know? I would say is that is that is that somewhere along the line, the athlete did not give a true MMP mean maximal power effort along the two or the three or the five or the that's eight possible. window. That's right. I find that the, 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 that they really, we need to get, uh, here's an example. When, 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 when the first book on W prime came out, uh, basically he was recommending what a three minute and a 20 minute test. And they're far too far apart. 
Yes. And now, when I was working with uh, with Dr. Townsend here, we were rec- we we did it. We did a one, a three, a five, a three, and a three, eight. seven, and a twelve. A three, seven, and a twelve. And now yeah. we're looking at five five different. No, uh, no, no, no. It's the other way around. So, okay, so since since the um, since the three, seven, twelve test has okay. sort of been validated. That's and, been validated. Okay. And yeah. one of my colleagues. This who, was six who, years ago. So. Yeah. So one of my colleagues. Um, uh, who is a German woman named Tina Parston, who's okay. worked in this area. Uh, she did a lot of work on this on this test and validated the test and looked at the effect of different recovery durations and things like this. Um, and the reason we're, we're looking at these other tests is because there is a lot of people, we don't think the three minute all out test, it's not a very good field test. You know, okay. that's the key uh, limitation. It's fine in the lab. Um, there are some, even there are some issues in the lab, maybe it overestimates a little bit, okay. but it's not practical for the field. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so in the field, it's much, much better to have a test where you can just have like the least amount of max efforts. So the easiest way, shall we say, yes. to get your maximum capacity, you know, to get your, what you're capable To get a pretty decent model. So if you do a three and a seven and a 12 and you do them all in one day. Uh-huh. So we, I did a research project a couple of years ago. We did that and we did half an hour breaks between to the, let them completely reset. That's right. So right. actually we started with the 12, then we did seven, then we did three. Okay. So that the was the question. We what order was best? Um, well, we did it in that order okay. only. Okay. Because we wanted to, um, I think that's the order. You wanted to stay did. aerobic. Well, we, what we wanted to do is we didn't want to fatigue them too. We felt that there might be fatigue. We didn't want to fatigue them. Yeah, we did it. The, we did it long to short. Yes. Okay. So okay. it got mentally kind of easier. You got, know? It, got it. Got it. As opposed to like, oh, doing the last thing. Oh, I've got to do this long. <laughs> long. Anyway. Yes. Okay. We still found that in the last one, when they did the three minute test, I think on average people from the, the, the subjects that were in the study that we had three minute data on. You had so on three time, minute efforts, right. They couldn't maintain the same power. Wow. So we think that that test is, the recoveries are not long enough. Okay. Okay. So okay. you need more, you need like at least an hour recovery, probably between the two, the, between the efforts. But then now you start having a test that's way too long. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're thinking about since the time. since then, in the last five years, there's been two studies that have come out that have looked at the effect of using different numbers of and different and the different durations. So not just um, two, three, four, or five tests, okay. test durations, but also whether or not you choose the the longest test and the shortest test, or you include ones in the middle. You the order, the three shortest or okay. the three longest. Okay. You compare all of these. <coughs> Basically, the two studies more or less show the same thing. As long as you have a test that's uh, uh, in the shorter range but not too short, and one that's in the longer range but not too long, ergo <coughs> not three and or not one minute and not twenty minutes. That's right. Yeah. Um, then and you can take out the test durations in the middle, and you just get the same result. Wow. Okay. Okay. So now I'm convinced that you can get a fairly reliable. Um, uh, critical power and W prime estimation with a three, and look, I think the twelve might be just a tiny little bit too short. It's, oh, really? in, it's in a bit of a grey zone. Okay. Because ten minutes below ten, what we saw from this study that came out is that anything less than ten minutes is too short, and ten minutes is right on the limit. So twelve minutes is not far beyond ten minutes. So sure. I think it's, a bit of a gray zone, but if we go to 14 or 15 minutes, it's completely well, it's fine. Yeah. But once we go out to 20 minutes, now it gets too long. Got it. Because over 20 minutes, what starts happening is remember, up until now, we've been talking about anaerobic energy, peripheral muscle fatigue driven process. Yes. Okay. But when you do a maximum effort for 20 minutes, you can now you it's likely that you're above threshold, okay? okay? In most cases, you're above threshold when you do a 20 minute max effort or above critical power, okay? But even during tw- a 20 minute effort, there will be other mechanisms fatigue which are not related or kind okay. of more okay. a little bit further away. Something else is going on. Something else is going on in the body which is yeah. not, it's indirect to it the It could muscles. be dehydration. Yeah, we could, could be. That could be core body temperatures going up, you're getting dehydrated, 
um, you know, like uh, some. You could be running out of sugar. Your ventilator. Yeah. Well, probably not. If okay. you're, if you're right. well hydrated. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Sorry, well, well fueled. Right. Um, and some of these other mechanisms could be sending information back to the brain, which are decreasing your um, your your descending drive to the muscle. Got it. So now you're at a point where the perception of effort. So even though you haven't reached VO two max. You haven't filled up the tank right. of fatigue. Of you of haven't fatigue. reached the maximum that uh-huh. fatigue mechanisms can get to. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're not able to sustain the power any longer. So you still have to drop the power. Got it. Okay. Because of some other mechanism fatigue. All right. And um, and that I find I think that this is the um, this is the big catch between the discrepancy between. Um, say FTP which people think is is a one hour long effort yeah. and that matches your threshold power I don't think that's right I think over one hour you fatigue there's a lot of mechanisms of fatigue which mm-hmm. are occurring mm-hmm. which are indirectly or they're not directly related to the fatigue which is being driven at the level of the muscle Okay, and that distinction is important because those two different types of metabolic profile so in a 60 minute if you give a maximum effort okay in a 60 minute task well what that means is at the very end of the task you should have filled up your w prime yeah okay you should have filled up the tank of fatigue yes but that won't happen in a 60 minute time trial that is paced very very well the lactate at the end of the time trial won't be as high as the lactate at the end of a 10 minute task yes or a 15 minute task Mm -hmm. okay the lactate Mm -hmm. will definitely and, then, and, and if you take the lactate at the end of a 3, a 7, a 10, or a 15, it'll be quite similar in every case. Got it. Okay? Okay. So the lactate will keep going up and up and up and yes, up. Yes, it's still it gets it's working within that metabolic exactly. window. Exactly. Well, the lactate yeah. is filling up. It's, yes. It's, I mean, it's the lactate... It's waste. Well, the lactate it's is not It's not a waste. It's a waste. So you know? Lactate is not waste. Lactate it's, is not waste. It's, it's kind of like a marker in yeah, a way. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Again, it's, it's a great indir- source of fuel. We just have to learn how to process it's, it's it. It's indirectly related yes. to the waste that, 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 that is occurring in, inside the muscle. Got it. Know? Uh-huh. Um, so then, yeah, so that what that means is, is that um, over these short durations, okay, so then the critical power model because there's these other mechanisms for fatigue which are distinct from the bioenergetic processes, right. we can only really say that the critical power model is valid within a certain time frame. Okay. Okay, so right. within about one or two minutes to about 15 or 20 minutes. Gotcha, okay. okay. But getting back to the test duration, so I think 20 minutes, so the same thing, for the long duration, Right. 20 minutes is getting too long. Too far up. We're not sure, like, or with all people, maybe maybe you have really good endurance and 20 minutes is fine for you, mm-hmm. okay? So you get a valid, you're above, you're above critical power, even at 20 minutes, okay? And for a 20-minute time trial, you're, you're above critical power and you don't have a lot of fatigue occurring, which is not related to peripheral muscle fatigue. Um, so in that case, you're going to get a good, you'll get a val- that's a, like a valid duration. But somebody else, a lot of other people, what might happen is that even after 20 minutes, they if you model the crit- if you model what they are predicted to be able to do right. over 20 minutes, based on a 15 minute and a three minute time trial, okay. they can't maintain, they can't even hold on at 20 minutes. So wow. their power is lower yes. at 20 minutes than what it should be. Okay. Which means that There's something some other, going out there. Some other mechanism right. of fatigue which is less related or not so related to the the peripheral muscle is now starting to have a greater effect than it was even 5 minutes earlier Got it. at 15 minutes. So Got I it. think 20 minutes is in the gray zone. 10 minutes is in the gray zone. 15 minutes is about right, you know. Got so it. I like 15 minutes. Uh-huh. Um, you said 12, I think. So that's right. So 12 to 15 so is 12, good. So 12, yeah. yeah so probably, yeah. I think 10, 10 is definitely too short. Yeah, yeah. We know that. Because we can get a VO2 out of a seven-minute window. <coughs> you said the seven, a seven-minute test was another... A, a of course they point. can... Well, you don't need that. So okay. You just it, do a three, and a, extra, a three and a 12. You do it... Well, I think the best thing to do is a three and a 15. A three and a 15. Okay. okay. A 12... A 12 might just be a tiny little bit too short. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I'd, still like, I'd like to do a project where we validate this. So, But I think if you do a three, 
And look, you could probably even do shorter than three. You could probably even go to two. Okay. Um, but again, a three just might be might be long enough, you know. Um, well, three there's minutes. another thing that you can do, okay. okay, which is you can actually do a peak. When you do, so the test that I like, that I've come up with, um, is simply you do a peak power test, which you sure. do as part of the warm up. So you get your peak yep. power out. Get their, get their max over six, right. five or six seconds. Yep. And then you do a three minute and a 15 minute. And I think you'll get a good W prime and a good, um, a good uh, critical power with that test. And then you have one hour of recovery. Okay. Now, and in this case, we can, you can do the three minute first and then the 15 minute later. Okay. afterwards so okay. um and with one hour recovery i think it's long enough that you won't have say if you do the 15 second you won't have you'll still get a maximum effort okay okay even okay. though you've done that three minute one hour previously okay. a maximum three minute effort okay so i still think that that's it's possible i mean we haven't tested it yet i'm going on speculation but sure, i sure. think it's i think it's, it's a hypothesis right that's now. right mm-hmm. So that's that's a good test to do. It's to do a you know do a peak power. Um, Give them an hour. If you didn't do the peak power, what you might do is you might um, make it a two minute test instead of a three. Okay. So you get just a little bit shorter to the high end. Sure, you can get some real uh, <coughs> uh, build up. That's yeah. right. But with with that the peak power, what you're then able to do is you actually can become a little bit more sophisticated. You can start to use and start to work with a three parameter critical power model that's what i was going okay. for right and then what you do is you put the the you don't estimate the the peak power so in three You've parameter critical the power model you just kind of you 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 fit the the third parameter which is peak power okay um whereas if you've got the actual number you enter that as a known variable not an unknown and then you just solve for two and that's possible to do that, okay? Gotcha. Um, and then that, that gives you, I think that gives pretty good data. Um, then, yeah, so from, from here going forward into the future, and why, I, okay, before we go into the future, there's, there's one part that we haven't talked about. Please. Which I think is, I think that this could be important. Um, we know that from some studies, so I have some data that shows that there's a relationship between, there's a linear relationship between um, VO2 as a percent of VO2 max and the depletion of W prime. Oh. <coughs> so as your, as your fatigue is filling up, yes. then your VO2 is going up. It's a linear. It. It's a linearish it's linear. connection. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And part of the reason for that is because some of the mechanisms of fatigue, they are directly related to the regulation of oxygen consumption. Got okay. It. Yep. Yep. So it makes yep. sense that those two things go together. Absolutely. And of course, we know already that phosphocreatine depletion is a mirror image of oxygen consumption going up. Got it. So they okay. go like They are mirror gotcha. images of each other. Gotcha. All right. Um, now, when you deplete, so what that means is when VO2 gets up to its VO2 max, mm-hmm. phosphocreatine, it's like phosphor. We, it's we, in we, the floor. We'll, we'll say phosphocreatine minimum. Yes. Okay, so we're reaching the minimum value that phosphocreatine can get to. And typically, from studies that, that um, have been done, that value is around about 20 to 30% of the resting level. So Got you can it. never drive no, phosphocreatine down to zero. You're going to get to necrosis you, if that happens. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. It probably is. It, 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 it's bad. You, you, you could have it's some, pretty bad. Yeah, there could be some, some, some breakdown or something going on. You know, the muscle energetic system yeah, is not going to work properly it, or something. It, exactly. But it never goes below about 20 to 30%. Okay. Okay. But that seems to be the floor that it gets yes. down to. And when it reaches... And then that exactly what happens. The phosphocreatine comes down and then it plateaus at its lowest Just like VO2 is maxing out. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, and if you do a short, if you do a very, very short, like a three minute um, maximum effort, the VO2 just goes up, it reaches max quickly. And in a three minute or loud effort, the ph- phosphocreatine, it depletes quickly and it, it reaches, it's like, it's like shall a, we a, say, a child on a slip and slide. And, and we'll say it reaches 20% very quickly. Whereas if you do a seven minute, effort which is at a lower intensity the vo2 goes up slower uh-huh. the the we, tank is of w prime is filling slower gotcha the phosphocreatine is depleting slower but they all reach the same they still get the 20 percent 
They and just reach the same end point in it. each case. Very okay? cool. Okay. Um, when phosphocreatine gets to these very, very low levels, this is important. This is one of the things that is stimulating and driving adaptations. Yes. And it is Thank stimulating. You've you got to get down there in order to create something. <laughs> that's right. So when you deplete phosphocreatine, and you, we know that this will deplete the high energy phosphates in the muscle, right? And, and the, the key one that we're talking about is ADP. Yes, adenosine okay. diphosphate. Because diphosphate. when you have ATP, we split ATP, produce muscle contraction, mm -hmm. and then we have an ADP. And well, a calcium left over or something, right? Well, uh, uh, a phosphate. phosphate we, have a, right. we have an ADP and, a, and an inorganic phosphate, right. okay, floating around, you know? Um, and then the, the, the phosphocreatine donates a phosphate to make the the ATP again. Sure. Okay, but that still leaves an inorganic phosphate floating yeah, around. You're still exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, like, when phosphocreatine depletes, the inorganic phosphate goes up. Yep. 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 Okay. So that they're more that they, they, they are tightly together. Okay. But after that, if you if you start to run low on phosphocreatine and you can't and the phosphocreatine can't donate that phosphate to the ADP, well, we start to build up more ADP around, okay? Then there's another reaction, okay, which is, um, uh, it's called the adenylate cyclase reaction, where you can take two ADPs together and create one ATP, which we then go and use for muscle contraction sure, or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. Plus one AMP, which is adenosine monophosphate. Monophosphate left over. Okay. Right. So now that's another way we get rid of we get rid of the ADP. We produce ATP, but we produce AMP. All right. Now once we produce AMP, it cannot get turned back into ADP or ATP. It's just it out will there. It, it's it it will get lost from the high energy pool. Okay. And when we increase AMP. We also, what that does, that will stimulate a biological signaling molecule called AMPK or AMP kinase. Kinase, exactly. When we activate AMP kinase, that's kind of like, that's a master, that, this is like a master switch, which then goes downstream and turns on a whole bunch of other genes. Okay, so this, one of the things that AMPK will activate is PGC1 alpha. PGC1 alpha is a gene switch. Yes. Which turns on a whole lot of other genes downstream. And some of those genes are related to, they are the genes of the mitochondrial respiration. So the, 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 these are the genes involved in oxidative phosphorylation, which makes sense in a way, okay? If you're doing high intensity anaerobic activity, which the body has evolved in such a way where if you do too much of that stuff, you're gonna to get too hot, you're gonna die. You, yeah, you, exactly. Yeah, like right. humans don't die very often, but they can. They sure. die sometimes through exercise exertion, like right. heat stroke and these It, it happens in Texas with you know, uh, high school kids. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but we've evolved in such a way that, uh, yeah, we don't die very easily. Um, but, but these, and it makes sense. It's like, well, we don't die because when we do this exercise, this high intensity exercise, it's telling the body, it's like, man, you need, you need, you need your aerobic energy system. We're getting right. fatigued. Right. We're getting fatigued here because there's not enough this aerobic. This hurts. Let's do something in our recovery this, yeah. to make it so that we are we're, better we adapted. Are, we are decreasing the phosphocreatine and we're increasing the uh, the, the tank of, of, of fatigue, of, of mechanism, W prime. W prime right. And we would lessen that. What would happen is if we were able to, and now imagine, imagine the table is our threshold. Yes. So below the table, we're, air we're not really, we, 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 don't, we don't add fatigue mechanisms when we're below the level yeah, of the we're, table. Yeah, we're processing everything. So imagine now if we raise the threshold up here. So Bingo. before- Bingo, adaptation. Okay. So if I'm at this power output here, yeah. okay, well, I'm, I'm above threshold, I'm gonna add to the fatigue mechanisms. Correct. But if my threshold is here, I You've can now the legs on the table. I can now exercise at that intensity right, right, without right. causing fatigue. Got it. And that would be important. That's a survival mechanism. Exactly. That That's was that was important to survive, you know, mm -hmm. like through throughout history. And, and that's evolution. what progression is all about. Progression. Exactly. Yeah. So what that means is that if we if we equate if the W prime, the depletion of the W prime or the filling up of the W prime tank if that is related to the mechanisms of fatigue and those same mechanisms of fatigue 
are related to signaling processes that are increasing your aerobic capacity, okay, or they're increasing your critical power, well, why don't we then go and monitor how much time that you spend when you're almost at the, when the W prime tank is almost full. Ah, for best training adaptation. That's right. So that's this idea of like monitoring, having a look at, and then keeping an eye on how much time do I spend when my W prime um, is, well, it's, it's, take, it's, when, 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 when you're when at 80%. I'm, that's right. Yeah. When I'm Instead of saying 20%, you're at 80%. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. So either I'm at the top when I'm, I'm almost, so how much time, and so I think that that is an important parameter to track. And this is one of this is what I think people should be doing. I think cyclists should be looking at how much W prime they expend in in a workout, mm -hmm. and how much time they they spend at that point where they're near to the the end range of fatigue, which is which I suspect is going to be related to signaling mechanisms. Got it. Okay, and then you can use that to progress your training when you go back to your normal basic principles of overload and progression. Yes, yes, yes. You progress that. So each week, like maybe maybe this week, I spent in the whole entire week, I trained for 10 hours and I spent 30 minutes of those 10 hours in that last little range. Right, you know, right, where I was right, near right, the right, edge. Right, 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 right. Okay, or 20 mm -hmm. minutes. Okay, so next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend 25 minutes. And then the week after, I'm going to spend 30 minutes. And then I can progress how much time I spend. You can literally do it minute, minute, second, that's second. Right. And you can, and your progression is at that high intensity energy. That's right. Yeah. And you don't know how long that you spend in that state by looking at the power output alone. Because remember, if you first jump up above, if you first jump up sure, to 400 sure, sure. watts, well, if you jump up to 400 watts and you just stay there for like 20 seconds, well, you don't deplete much of your W prime. Right, right, right. Okay. It's a but if you stay, linear, uh, if you stay uh, there for a whole minute, well, you get down, you get mm -hmm. down to a low level mm -hmm. of W prime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's no good saying if I do 10 one minute intervals at 400 watts, you can't say, well, I've done 400, I've done 10 minutes at 400 watts. I see where you're going. That is the same workout. Okay. And remember the recovery kinetics as uh -huh, well uh -huh, are important. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right, that's that might not be the same workout as doing 20 seconds on at 400 watts and 20 seconds off because of the way the kinetics work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. it's definitely not the same thing. However, if we were to doing one minute on two now, if I change the recovery, right? If I have one minute on two minutes off, I'm still doing 400 10 minutes or 400 watts, but I haven't spent the same amount of time in a, a right. state of low W prime. So there is some more recovery. There is something to be said for making W prime the primary metric once we have a valid and, and strong it's the model. the primary metric for high intensity for high training intensity. Exactly. only. Okay. One or two days a week. Not, not one, low. The most. It's, it's one part of the training. So sure. uh, you have to factor that in. We could to fight. the other. You also yeah. have threshold training. Oh, you sure, also sure. need to train around threshold and right. this idea of sweet spot I think you don't need to do too much training at sweet spot but you need to do some but of course you need to do a large amount of training at low intensity yes. aerobic the base. vast amount of it needs to be low and low, low and efficient so when we look at the the time in W prime zones that's not going to help us make decisions about how much time I would spend doing LSD like long duration sure aerobic zone base two stuff. LSD yeah, yeah long slow kind of distance right, or whatever. Right. Um, so that 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 is something different, and the the long slow distance stuff is you're not going to touch W prime. No, you're not going to touch W prime. Um, well, you may do if you do some intervals well, in the should, middle. Well, you like you got you got to get home. You got to climb the hill and get home. Yeah, sure, you may, you sure, may sure. Do, you But know. the vast majority of your time, you, you, you're basically taking a walk on the bike. Yeah. yeah. So those are two sort of different things, and I, but I definitely think for when you're when you're focusing on the high intensity component, you can do that. You know, um, and probably. Um, look, it's hard to know when, when I said that the adaptations, it'll actually drive some aerobic adaptations. It's likely going to drive the aerobic adaptations actually in the fast twitch fibers and these type two, what two these intermediate X. fibers, what fast twitch is type two. Then yeah. you have this other type, which is called type two A. Yeah. Two A. Okay. And type two A fibers are kind of these intermediate fibers. And maybe what you do is you might make some of those fibers a little bit more aerobic. Okay, so what you might even do with some of that training, it's possible that you'll 
slightly increase your VO2 max by having slightly more aerobic fast twitch fibers. Whereas I really think that the way, the best way to train your slow twitch fibers will tend to be by doing this long duration, right. low intensity stuff. Overreaching through long, long intensity. That's right, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Um, so that's, that's a definitely, that's one of the ways that I think it's a really good way to like use W prime is to sort of look at how much, how much am I expending yeah. in a given workout yeah. and how much time am I spending? You get used to doing that process and then you get used to understanding and then hopefully, so in the future, what we want, so where we're going in the future is, well, where I would like to see this work go in the future is for the models the W balance model needs to get better. It needs okay. to be stronger. That's right. So okay. we need to understand. Um, we need to understand the kinetics of the recovery and or the depletion and the recovery, and those the the that those kinetics of that curve needs to be more accurate. So at the moment, it's not very accurate in every single situation. In some situations, it works pretty well. Um, for example, when you do long intervals. So intervals say in the range of one to ten minutes. Sure, it works pretty well. Sure, you know, I like if you do if you do a four minutes I, on, yeah. four minutes yeah. off, four 40, minutes on, forty thousand hours of rider data that it would agree yeah. with you. Yeah. As long as your tests, your input values, so your W prime, your critical power, as long as those values are accurate in the beginning, mm -hmm. and that's and again, I think that's why it's that's an advantage of doing the one day test with less uh, workloads. Okay. okay, with less you know less time trial you're less likely to have one where you pace it badly or you sure, just sure, don't sure. feel well. And if you do them on different days, it's easy to be you know, in a different state of freshness on one day compared to another. So you get slightly weird values. Whereas if you're in a good state of freshness, you're ready to go, you do a test and you give it everything you got, then I think that will be transferable to the W balance model when we do like one minute on, one minute off, two, three, yep. four minute on, yep. four yep. minute off, these types of controlled intervals that you do. Where it doesn't seem to work super duper well is when you mix those intervals with short, sharp sprints. Short, sharp sprints. Or right. if you do Tabata or something like sure, that. Sure, so sure. It doesn't seem to work very well when you do this high intensity and they have short recoveries and then maybe you have a long interval and long recovery then you know well, so inside of the 25 seconds and inside yeah, of the PCR then, then it's yeah. not then we then we can get these weird things where the people are like oh I can't I can't sustain they reach task failure and either the W prime is very negative or it's very positive you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's where the something's going wrong with the kinetics like maybe when it's when they they reach uh, a very negative W prime for that person it's depleting too quickly than, than what it should in reality. So right, yeah, right. maybe maybe their input parameters are not right and maybe the kinetics of the model are not quite right as got well. It, you know? Got it, got it. So got I, it. I would love to see that. That's what I'd love to see in the future. And that's where the next 10 or 15 years gets to be spent. Yeah, right? hopefully. You know, very, like, very cool. And, very cool. And and I think that could be useful. Like if we understand, um, and we might, what, what may need to happen is to go to a full on, what we would call a reductionist model where you actually start to model the fatigue, the actual fatigue processes themselves. Gotcha. Okay, so whereas you're w drawing prime, blood, you're you're whereas, looking at respiratory rates. That's right. Whereas like W that. prime is this mishmash of, it's a mishmash of anaerobic energy, aerobic energy, right. all of the fatigue mechanisms thrown in together. Right. It makes it difficult to know to partition to see what's what. <coughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. What effect each one is having individually on on your on your performance capacity because yeah. W prime really it's kind of. It's actually a performance measure, yes, sort of thing. Okay. You know? um, so what we kind of what we have to do, I think, is we have to move to a more realistic model, and and so the kinetics of the recovery and depletion that needs to be better and more accurate. And then there's another thing that needs to be, which I think can be done a little bit more accurately, um, and that is to understand to do away with an assumption in the W balance model, which is that. Your, your aerobic energy supply is at critical power. It's instantaneously at critical power and it's always at critical power. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Which is not true. No. Okay, the so math then, is not as the same thing as the physiology. That's right, yeah. exactly. So the assumptions of the model is that as soon as you go above... Um, You're on borrowed time. As soon son. as you go above critical power, yeah. 
you the different the you're expending W prime as the difference between whatever the power is yeah. and your critical power. Okay. But that's not quite right. No. Because as soon as you do an increase in your workload, let's just say I'm at five hundred watts, but I started from zero. I'm not my aerobic energy system hasn't it hasn't like got up to critical power yet. So actually my true aerobic energy supply is a lot lower than my VO2 would be when it's at critical power. Maybe my VO2 at critical power is four liters, but as it's increasing, when you're it's not at two liters, liters immediately. That's yeah. right, you're not yeah. there immediately. And that means that your, the work balance model will actually underestimate your, uh-huh. your anaerobic uh-huh. energy expenditure. Got it, got it, got okay? it. Okay, so it, that's what it. will tend to happen. Okay. Um, and then the same thing on the other side, when you're recovering, it's assuming that you've got this recovery level as which soon is as you get below power, 300 watts you're, you're, you're but that doesn't happen no. the, 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 the aerobic energy goes down it recovers sure. fast at the beginning but then it, it comes down you it's, know? It's, it's almost like vector it's a, it's a, it's a kinetic uh, friction issue yeah and some friction and a way, a way a very very easy way to prove this okay would be to do a series imagine your your creek power is 300 watts uh, a, a, a very very simple way to prove the fact that you're going to fatigue yeah. without ever going above critical power okay is to do a series of like short sharp sprints where the power never goes above critical power so you just like oh sure you just, you raise exponentially as, weighted moving average no 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 oh, no, no, no. Okay, you just okay. you just increase the power as quickly as you can up to say 290 watts. Oh, okay, right? okay, okay. Which okay, will gotcha. use some anaerobic gotcha. energy. Right. Then you reco- then or then you hold 200. Right, how long watts? can you hold uh, five by fives between 290 and zero? If yeah, you something like that. Oh, okay. Up and down, Makes up and down, sense. up and down. Sure, and what sure, if sure. the lactate at the end? I guarantee you, the lactate will be high. Gotcha. At the end of uh, of a task, even though the physics have said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the like the lactate will be high. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. even though um, it's it's. You haven't even gone above, right? Uh, like you haven't even gone above threshold. Okay, so you will, in that case, you will be filling up the tank of W prime. Yeah, so you're yeah, yeah. you're going to be using W prime even though you've never gone above threshold. And the reason for that is this idea because the VO two kinetics are slower yeah. than the anaerobic yeah, energy yeah, system. Yeah, that's yeah. always that's always what's happening, you know. So um, and then. And again, probably because of this thing of like you, you, you're creating a MP, which doesn't like that takes much That's longer. Right. As you said, it's like out maybe, of the chain. maybe that takes 24 hours okay. to fully recover all of your resting levels of high energy phosphates. So the normal level of ADP, ATP, AMP in the muscle, maybe after a super duper high intensity workout, it might take you 24 hours to get all of those concentration levels back to baseline again, okay? Because you've got this other metabolism needs to, it's not fast. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, the, these complex molecules, you have That's to right. build, you have to build them exactly. from Exactly, you created trauma. Yeah. You created trauma and you, now you gotta have nutrition, you yeah. gotta have uh, calories, yeah, you, gotta, recovery, you gotta recovery and you gotta rest. Yes, And resting exactly. is, is, a, is a valid part of the entire process. Yes, That's Nobody right. Nobody thinks about that. Yeah. So, um, fascinating, fascinating. So then, fascinating. yeah, so then, then um, you know, like you're gonna run into a situation where even according to the model, you have depleted no W prime. Sure. But in reality, you have. Yes. You definitely have. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, so the lactate's I, gonna be high. Mm-hmm. That's right. And what I so this is what I feel. I feel as though the the work balance model can maybe could start to move towards something which is a bit more like looking at the 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 relationship between energy expenditure yeah. and the energy the the energy expenditure component is very, very difficult. What people, the mistake that people have been making for a long, long period of time is that they look at the relationship between oxygen consumption mm-hmm. and power output at low intensity. And then they make a, a, a they extrapolate that curve above threshold and they have a linear curve and they say, well, above threshold at 400 watts, this is the energy demand. But as we spoke about before, you become inefficient as you get right, fatigued. As you right, fill up the W prime right, tank, right. you get fatigued. You become inefficient. You're not going to reach that. It's number. not linear. What actually happens is is the the energy demand related to the intensity, okay, the external power output, okay. So the internal metabolic energy demand relative to the external power output will go up like it'll go up linear at first. Then when you hit threshold, 
it'll start to go That's up like right. this. That's right. That's right. It's ski ramps. Okay. It's because ski of the inefficiency. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, a, there's plenty of papers in the literature that, that, that discuss this, how this happens, okay? So what that means is that the, the concept of the accumulated oxygen deficit or the maximum accumulated oxygen deficit, which relies on the assumption of a linear curve all the way, so the relationship between energy demand and external power output, it relies on the assumption that it's linear, but it's not linear, okay? Because it changes with fatigue. So that change, in order to get these, in order to get it accurate, in order to say like, I should be able to do, at the end of this race, after I've done all of this other stuff, I should be able to hold this amount of power output. I need to know what the efficiency is at that given moment right, in time. Right, 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 right. So what we need to do is we need, there needs to be studies that look at the efficiency in greater detail with... After hour one, after hour two, exactly, after hour three, that's after right. hour four. And do intervals is, at all different sets. Exactly, yeah. A yeah, yeah, whole bunch yeah. of different stuff. Yeah. And it's very, these are very, very challenging studies to do. So there's not very many of them at right, the moment right. in the literature. Right. Um, there's a couple. They're just getting started on this type of thing. And so what we show and what we know, there was a very good study came out uh, very recently um, and it's from Andy Jones's group. He's, okay. the, he's the professor yes. at the University of Exeter mm -hmm. and uh, the leader of the group. He was going to say, we're talking Sky. And, yeah, 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 exactly. And, and so what they, what they did is they did a long duration. They did 40 minutes and 80 minutes below critical power. Great. And then they did, and maybe two hours as well. Um, and in the two hour test only, they did it with and without carbohydrate supplementation. Good. And then at the end of each test, so we had a 40 minute below critical power, 80 minute below critical power, and two hours below critical power. 120 minutes, wow. Um, and I can't remember if they were each at the and same. And then they did intervals after that. No, so no, no, they no. did three minute all out They did a three minute test. Okay, yeah. great, so good, they could good. Good. W prime Excellent. and critical power. Okay. And so what happens, of course, is that in the 40 minute test, not a big change. Sure. Okay, not much of a change. 80 minute test, hardly any change in critical power, uh -huh. but W prime is coming down. Uh -huh. In the two hour test, you have it now, you have a small change in critical power and a large decrease, like a decrease, yes. and a large decrease in W prime. But when you do the carbohydrate supplementation, it offsets the decrease in the W prime is not as bad sure. as when you're not supplemented, okay? So what that's showing is that probably glycogen depletion is related to the ability to produce uh, energy, uh, to produce power above critical power, okay? There's another much older study where they glycogen plate people uh, using like low carb meals sure, the sure, day sure. before, okay. and then they test critical power and they find that W prime is very low, sure. whereas W whereas critical power doesn't change so much. Got it. So what what I really think is happening mostly in in a road race, what is mainly happening is that in a long road race, let's say two, three, four hours, something like yes. that. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, that it has lots of surges going on. Lots of stochastic power. Okay, so what's happening mainly is that the ability to produce energy aerobically is not changing very much, okay? You can still, you can almost sustain your same threshold power, maybe 5% less, okay? Okay. Even after a long race than right. you can when you're fresh. Okay. All right, um, but what happens is the W prime comes down because you become Glycogen depleted. There's probably all of these yeah, other the dehydration like, thing. Is yeah, a yeah. There's like right. you know, there's things that are going on, like the glycogen depletion. I think is a big one that's mm -hmm. affecting well, carbohydrates. Are carbohydrate. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But then also you um, you have all the other things going on in the body which are indirectly affecting your ability to produce power. So that will show up in the W prime if you if you tested it. But it will also show up in your critical power. So and we don't quite know yet whether or not these, the decrease in critical power that people experience, say with prolonged exercise below critical power, we're not sure what the mechanism is there yet. We don't know whether or not, is it purely because the person is becoming inefficient? Is there a greater level of central fatigue? I think there's probably a little bit of both mm -hmm. because there are some studies that show both. We show some decreases in efficiency and we certainly know that central fatigue increases when you do prolonged exercise, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, and there's some studies on 
neuromuscular effects you know they do these fatigue studies and of course these these show they they definitely show high they, they show high both you know high peripheral and high central fatigue um but i haven't looked at many in cycling like the ones in running it's harder to well, tell because that's where you see the runners. The muscle will get damaged in well, yeah, running the in, runners, ultra, in a marathon sure or, You've seen the runners that, that just fall apart with 100 meters to go. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. It's well, that's, that's heat stroke heat, and that's, that's exactly. glycogen depletion. Yeah. They don't, there's not even enough blood sugar. Their blood right. sugar levels in these people, right. they're so glycogen depleted, they'll have very low levels of blood sugar and yeah. very low lactates. Yeah. And so if the blood sugar level is very, very low, well, it's not getting sugar to the brain. That's the right. They're, they're literally properly. running out of, out of, out of you know, the basic functions of life. These are the people that, you know, again, yeah. if they didn't get help, they would be dead. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So... Well, listen. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful evening. Yeah, and I am so grateful. This is just this has been very rewarding, and um, I, I, I just I, I, I always learn something whenever uh-huh. we get the chance to chat, and uh, it all segues into uh, you know the fundamentals. Yeah. And, the, and and what we've done is we've rehashed those. You yeah. got to go easy, and when you go hard, you got to monitor yeah. what's going hard. Yeah. And you are one of the pioneers. To yeah, teach so do what it. hard really means. That's right. So I, I definitely recommend this test. I think as any cyclist, I think it's a good test to do. You do the peak power. Uh-huh. You, you do that as part of the warm-up. Yes. Maybe you have a 10-minute break after the peak. You, you sure. do it a couple of times to try to yeah, do you're trying to figure out true you peak beat power. Beat the 1,100 watts. You know, it's only five minutes. seconds. It's only five yeah. seconds. So you don't really get very fatigued. You have a 10-minute break. You do a normal warm-up. Yep. You don't do too hard. Then you do three minutes. Okay. One hour recovery, you know, like probably like... The first fifty minutes will be off the um, bike, off the bike, and it doesn't. You don't have to do anything, or it can be very, very low intensity. Then yep. the last ten minutes is the same warm up that you did before. Perfect. The three minute. Okay. So that's a great test. Use the W pri- the the W balance model. Yes. Um, Use and don't the, expect it to be perfect. Right. And do Use the, it as the, a guide. The twelve to fourteen minute window that you like. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. So I think. Well, do a, I think I think do a fourteen or a fifteen minute. Okay. Test. 14, I don't 15. think there'll be a big difference between gotcha. those okay. two. Okay. Okay. So you have got um, your peak. You got your three. You got your fifteen, and that's going to give you that that parabola. That one. It'll half give of you parabola. well because because you only have two values now. Okay. Um, it, you'll get you, what you'll do is you'll do you'll estimate critical power using a linear model. Oh, a linear okay. instead of a curve. That's right. Okay. All right. Got it. So to do yeah. the curve of linear, you need three. Yeah. And technically, the the peak power is not right because it's not. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, Understood. That, that's a bit more complicated sure, right, sure. to get in because okay. it's not linear. But the three and the fifteen, those are good yeah. values to yeah. get a good number out. Yeah. Of, so. And then yeah, use the use the W balance model, Very and good. I think. Well, we get to I, practice that every yeah. day with Perf Pro, which uh-huh. is the stuff the software that I use. Yep. And it, 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 it's on the dashboard, yeah. so it allows us to see and witness this. If we go to a negative balance, mm-hmm. we also know that we are you know, probably doing too many short sharps. And what we can do is we can reassess well, it doesn't, based on those numbers. You can, you're doing the, it doesn't mean you're doing too many short sharps. I agree, not too many, but we're, but we're, I mean, we're kind of blowing the model. Maybe, the, yeah, you're blowing right. the model. Right. That, that, that's not a problem to do the yeah. short sharp stuff in your training. But if we were to train as w, with W prime as the, as the primary, we could say, okay, we're going to give you two minute, four minute, and six minute intervals, and your goal is to get to twenty percent W yeah. prime for each one of those. As an example, though, I think so. This is the thing where people say, you know, and I've, and I've seen some coaches say, oh, why would you do uh, like a thirty minute all out interval? Like, so we, we, we do some training, and okay. I, I have one of one of um, the PhD students that was in our lab that is now working as a as a cycling coach. Um, he he was he started to introduce some of the intervals that we were doing yes training in the lab like 30 seconds times five sure. you know or like these all out we were doing all out 20 second intervals and things like this as part of our uh-huh. training uh-huh. um he he introduced some of these intervals with pro level cyclists okay you know, like guys okay. that are competing at the tour and sure. the Giro and whatever Great. okay and had he had success you know like he had some good success very with, cool with some of these guys you know and uh-huh. again i think you get some coaches that will be like, cycling's an aerobic sport, why would you do that? That's an aerobic. And I'm like, I'm not, no, not like a 20 second interval. If you it's repeat nothing. it, it's like, here's your, here's your W, yeah, here's you your go w up problem. and then you recover and then you go down to there. Then you go up and then you recover and sure. then you go up and then you max it. Yes. And when you hit that maximum, once you're up here, you're, you're stimulating aerobic adaptations. Yes. So it's going to help, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. it did. It exactly. was very, very cool. you know. So we think it was, <laughs> and, and we see a bit of that even at the pro 
level there are some there this there's a bit of a trend towards doing like super duper high intensity short duration all out intervals and yep. things like this yep. you know so it, that, that is again, happening anyone says that it doesn't help your climb go try it yeah go, go try it sometime yeah. I, I, I think again I'm enjoying it's my part of it's just one little puzzle in bigger picture exactly you know? exactly so that is that is exactly what it is and on that note we should probably end it because yeah. he's got to get a, for he's got to get right. a plane that's right uh, but I'm so grateful thank yes. you so much for your time and attention and all these years it's yeah. just been wonderful fantastic so, well this is Coach Wharton I'm going to sign off uh, we're going to take a couple of days to render this and uh, we will probably break it down into multiple chapters for everyone to enjoy but thanks for watching and listening and don't forget uh, if you have questions I'll provide his email and I'll also provide my own. And uh, this is Online Bike Coach out of Reno, Nevada. Thanks so much. Great, dude. Thanks so much. That was great. Awesome. <laughs>